The next thing we'll troubleshoot is what happens when there's not enough positive contact between the positive film and the mesh, meaning this is not pressed tightly against the mesh behind it. The way this can happen is just by simply not using pressure whatsoever on your exposure unit. If you, we've had a lot of people that instead of putting foam down, they just put a piece of wood down, which doesn't evenly distribute the pressure across the mesh. So what we'll do is demonstrate kind of the extreme effect of what can happen, and we'll just turn this exposure unit on without using any weight or foam on top of it. Even during the exposure, you can see that this is not pressed tightly against the mesh. So if I press this down against the positive, you can see that would be a good positive contact right there where my finger's pressing closely down. But you can see there's light definitely working its way around. We'll show the cause and effect of this when we wash it out. Now we'll wash out the screen that does not have enough positive contact between the film and the mesh. You can see the exposure area. You can even see the blurriness in the film positive image area. This image, instead of being crisp and clear, because it's a spot color image, it should look very crisp and clear. It's very blurry. You can still see it, but very blurry edges, not very much definition. Let's try to wash it out. Now that our image has soaked up some water, we'll try to wash it out. Turn on the backlight. We see the emulsion fall immediately out of the screen because we did use a dark enough emulsion. However, our detail is just not there. Our edges are all very blurry. Some of the finer detail is not even coming out in the image. You really have to work on this, these smaller lines up here because the image was not pressed firmly against the screen mesh, so, lot, so much light worked its way around it. And now we're even starting to blow out some of the screen area up there. That's a good enough example to show you what happens. Now our big bold text, that washed out, but still not very good quality. It would look kind of distressed and not very sharp on the shirt. And then this finer image area up here didn't wash out all the way. And as you can see right here, we're starting to blow out the image. Now we could come back and block that out possibly, but the best thing to do is just use positive contact and that's a very easy fix to do. Remember, positive contact equals positive results. Next, we'll show underexposure. Instead of exposing the screen for the proper amount of time, for four minutes, four minutes, 50, uh, 30 seconds, we're going to expose it for two and a half minutes and show you what happens during the underexposed screen and how that affects the washout and then even the final print. So bump that down here quite a bit. And then we'll expose. Now we have our underexposed screen. Now this had everything else going for it. It had a good positive contact. It had a very dense film, but we exposed it for about half the exposure time to show what happens with an underexposed screen. First thing that you can tell, as soon as you start to wash the screen out, the emulsion will feel slimy. So we feel the back here. This emulsion is very, very slimy, and you can see it start to set up quite a bit. During the exposure process, what's going on is the light is not being allowed to penetrate all the way through to the back of the frame. So this emulsion back here is left unexposed, whereas the front part of the emulsion is left exposed. You can see it's starting to film up on the back of the frame area right here. If you look closely, you can even see red diazo or yellow diazo dripping off of the frame and onto the foam on the bottom. It's got like a little yellowish tint to it. Definitely not exposed long enough. Now our image is still washing out, which is good. That's why using a DXP very, very easily to use friendly emulsion is very good as you're starting out because you can see this is still working even though our screen's underexposed.
Now what's happening with this underexposed screen is we're losing a lot of our halftones. These halftones should be sticking to the screen, but we're losing them right here. Actually, a pretty good positive result. We had um, mo some of half tones drop out, but most of them stayed in. We even got our registration marks to expose and wash out. However, what's happening now is that there's diazo dripping into the frame. You see this slime on the back of the screen right here? This is unexposed diazo. So what we're, what's happening is as this water starts to drip into the frame, it's actually dripping unexposed emulsion into the washed out area. If that's allowed to dry, that's going to block our screen. We're going to have to come back with like a, a toothpick or some type of emulsion remover to try to get it out of this image area. Also, see how easily these half tones remove from the screen? This should stick, but uh, any pressure at all will make that half tone, you know, fall right off the screen mesh. The other thing to keep in mind about an underexposed screen is that even though we probably could have made this work and successfully printed a shirt with it, it would have broken down so much faster and not last even near as long as a properly exposed screen because this emulsion is so sensitive. We'll have a lot more pinholes as we start to print through it. You can even see some pinholes starting to break open right now, but even before we start to print through it, but the emulsion is not very strong. So it's going to break down a lot faster during the printing process. The other thing about an underexposed screen is that as soon as it's receptive to ink and then your chemicals that you clean the ink out of the screen with, that underexposed emulsion absorbs that in. If it was exposed properly, it would be hard and resist all those chemicals in that ink. But since it's underexposed, the pores are still left open in the emulsion and it absorbs all that in. The chemical reacts to the emulsion and locks the emulsion in the frame. So if we printed with that and then came back to try to wash it out, it would be very difficult to wash out. Whereas a properly exposed screen, because it's solid and it has a hard resistant surface to it, stands up to these inks and chemicals and makes washout a lot easier. If you see the bottom of the washout seat, you can see that how much diazo is dripping off the back of our screen area. You can also see the diazo starting to drip into the exposure area. That will dry in the screen and make it very hard to print and block the print. The other thing to keep in mind about your exposure unit itself is that when it's new, it's going to expose screens a lot faster than six months down the road, a year down the road. You need to increase your exposure time. If you start to see a lot of diazo starting to drip through your image area, or if you see a lot of slime building up, just up your exposure time by 10, 20 seconds and continue to do that until you see the slime and the diazo drips go away. If your film positives are not dense enough, what you can do is stack them on top of each other. If you notice this person right here exposing this screen had a very light film positive, but they stacked three on top of each other and then taped them together. So once they're done, they actually have a fairly dense image. It's not perfectly lined up, but you see the difference between that and then just one. It's very important to have an opaque positive as we saw, so sometimes you might have to finagle stuff like this to get better results. It's kind of worth it, but remember it's a lot easier just getting the right printer and the right software. The last thing we'll touch on is an overexposed screen. Now this is probably one of the least common troubleshooting areas in the emulsion process because if you have a good positive film in the first place, if it's very dense and you have a good positive contact, it's really hard to overexpose your screen. Your film is going to be dense enough to continue to block out the exposure light and if that positive contact is strong enough, then no light will get around that dense film. So overexposure is really not much of an issue. It's typically an issue when you have lower quality films, but what does happen during overexposure if you really overexpose the screen way too long is that light does start to work its way around the edge of the image area. Similar to this right here as we saw with not enough positive contact, but it's much less extreme with an overexposed screen. An overexposed screen will just have a lot of heat that travels into the emulsion and will, it will be harder to wash out. But really it's not something to be concerned about if you're using the right types of film positives and have a good top positive contact between your film positive and your screen mesh. 
That wraps it up for this troubleshooting section. We'll do a little more troubleshooting during the reclaiming process and what happens if you have too much emulsion or a locked screen when you try to reclaim it. But really watch this section in depth and apply it to what you're doing in the darkroom. Emulsion can be a pain and you can pull your hair out if you don't know what you're doing. So this section will really help you out and get the best results.